Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Missouri here, February 4th, 2020. Quick technical analysis for you of the S&P 500. Haven't been doing many of these lately because, as I said the other day, it's been uh, kind of boring, not really much to report, kind of the similar look, you know, rising wedge, you know, waning momentum and so on. But lately, of course, with all this volatility, it is getting interesting. And I think it's, you know, it's instructive. I know many of you have commented to me that you like these analyses. We don't necessarily act on these. In fact, we don't. I do look at longer term technical trends and I point to those in client meetings and so forth. This is kind of uh, trader stuff, but you know, it does give us a feel for you know, money flow on a near term basis. I don't think it's been very profitable of late for folks who trade what um, what would normally be tried and true indicators. We've talked about that along the way as the market has continued to melt higher. You know, from a longer term technical perspective, yes, this rising wedge is a bearish pattern, tends to precede fall offs in the market on a you know, small and large basis. Yes, this uh, negative divergence in the MACD is a bearish pattern. Yes, this is a sell signal, but um, you know, we've got lots of forces pushing against it right now. So anyway, I thought I'd just take a minute and point out the things that jump out at me from a technical perspective and things that I believe technicians are looking at. And again, the reason that's instructive is because lots of people trade uh, the technicals as opposed to the fundamentals and make all their decisions based on that. And there's multiple ways of doing it. And this, what I'm sharing with you here is pretty basic stuff. So first thing that jumps out at me is right here, this big red candle. You notice how that the body of that candle, the fat part, basically encompasses all the way back to there. So several days of trading show up in the body of this candle. That's called an engulfing candle. Now, when that happens here at what could be a market peak, that tends to be a pretty bearish signal. Well, then, of course, the next day, I say, of course, and nothing's of course anymore. But the next day we had this gap down, which you know, kind of confirmed that. And in addition to that, we broke below this uh, trend line. You see it break this line right here. So you had an engulfing candle, a trend line break, a gap lower. Now, think about the gap lower, as many technicians will tell you that like 90% of all gaps get filled. And as you can see, that gap was filled fairly quickly, just within you know a couple of days. So now we have, you know, we have the, the engulfing candle, the gap down. Now we're testing that level where we gap down, right? So right here, ironically, right around 3,300, you can see what happened. We came back, tested it, failed, came back another big candle, not an engulfing candle. You know, there's a little bit above it there. Um, came back and now we're testing it again today. Um, you know, and I could tell you it's on news that, you know, there's there's rumored, you know, medicines that, that could have a positive impact, impact on the virus. I sure hope so. When you see the market trade like it is and really bounce on, you know, on news like this, it definitely tells you there's still a lot of hope that, uh, you know, that the ball game isn't over. There's a lot of faith in central banks. We're seeing that play out. China has jumped in with just massive stimulus the last two nights. And so, um, you know, if you read the blog and you see my comments, I just kind of keep reiterating that, sure, this <clears throat> bull market could absolutely continue to move further into all-time high territory over the foreseeable future. In fact, history would suggest that that is... Uh, what we should expect, and it's part and parcel to perhaps the later stages of the longest bull market or a long bull market. Um, of course, that remains to be seen. What I think is, um, I think, in my view anyway, uh, is beyond question, is that stocks are moving beyond what economic and you know valuation fundamentals, if you will, dictate. Um, but they can do that for a very, very long time. You know, you've heard it said that, uh, you know, the market can stay stupid longer than a person who's going against that move can stay solvent. So just a couple of things, uh, you know, break down here. If the test fails, you know, you would expect, you know, big moves lower, but there's lots of potential catalysts in both directions. So what I said the other day and repeated this morning is look for huge volatility in this market in both directions and it could be sparked at a moment's notice. I am feeling very good about our current core allocation 
in client portfolios. In fact, this is you know this is tracking the position. So you can see right here, um, these are, this is the percent move on the day. This down here, by the way, these aren't positions. This is the VIX and the VIX of the VIX. This is just tracking volatility measures. So people are uh, bailing out of their you know options, shorting positions, if you will. That this is the implied volatility cost going down. But you know, gold is down noticeably this morning. That's been our one of our best positions this year. This is bonds. We don't own this either. This is just an indicator. The yen is down. That's more or less a defensive position. The fund that shorts junk bonds, of course, that's going down today with, with this favorable move in the market. Utilities and then the euro, the rest is up. So we're actually having a nice day. The bulk of the positions are up. And some of these are pretty solid positions within the portfolio. But that's how a kind of an all-weather portfolio works. When you're down, we're going to have some up items. And when it's up, we're going to have some down items. Again, wanted to uh, jump in, share the technicals, threatening that line right there again. You know, the momentum would say this thing's going to break through there. Uh, we'll see. I wouldn't make any strong bet one way or the other. Uh, like I said yesterday, remember, I said I'm invoking physics. You've got a big, heavy market here, and it's rolling with some momentum. And, you know, that's tough to stop. you got something big coming at you. Just think of, you know, the big fullbacks in the NFL. They can mow you over. This market is mowing things over for sure. Uh, but it's also heavy. So when the momentum begins to wane, right, look at the MACD, it's heavy, right? And, you know, there's a lot of incentive out there. You know, election this year, the Summer Olympics in Japan, the Communist Party 100th anniversary after the first of the year. Um, the powers that be in some of the largest economies that, that, you know, are influenced by the largest central banks in the world have huge incentive to keep this heavy market afloat. And so you have to put lots and lots and lots. You know, the bigger it is, the more of the countervailing force you have to put in there to keep it afloat. So all that printing of money, all that suppressing of interest rate, in the end, when all of this is said and done, and, um, you know, and this thing really begins to lose momentum and begin to come down, we should expect, you know, a substantial correction in this market. And with the corporate debt mess underneath it, I think it could lead to a real damaging and crushing bear market. But the things I just mentioned in terms of, you know, what can continue to keep sentiment going are pretty strong things. And they can keep this market afloat for quite some time. Uh, you clients out there who pay us to manage your money, this is basically when we earn our keep. And that is to make good, smart, logical decisions. Uh, whether or not they work out in the short term really doesn't matter. As long as we are doing what makes sense based on fundamental reality, I think we can all sleep at night. The only uh, bummer it feels like is when the market's melting higher and we're not capturing all of that move. Um, if there was ever a time to be comfortable with that, now's the time. I'll leave it there. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.